Hello, everyone. Welcome back to our series on the Neb. We are in series two. Uh, our first series, we did a, a, an introduction of what is the Neb, the language of the Neb, and how you would use it. It's built on Vega and Vega Lite. Uh, I have with me Daniel Marsh, the creator of this visual. And Hello. we're going deeper. So we're going to go a little bit further in, and we're going to make a uh, use a template that's from the application, build a bar chart, and continue on with the series. So Daniel, take it away. Let's Let's go build some stuff. Yeah, awesome. Thank you, Mike. Um, is my screen visible? Your screen is on, and we can see a table and a line chart. Lovely. So this one's going to be a little simpler than, you know, we, we covered a lot of ground in the last video. Um, so what we want to do is just, you know, instead of creating, you know, copy-pasting a bar, we'll, we'll walk through the template that we, we teased you with in the last video. Yes. So in my report, I have Deneb already loaded, but, you know, for those that missed this last time, uh, Deneb can be obtained from the marketplace inside Power BI by going to get more visuals and having a look. Type in Deneb. Boom, right uh, there. Clicking visual. And when it comes up, we can add it to our report. So I've already added that, but that's just how you may find it. Uh, so I'm going to add um, a Deneb visual to my canvas. And as we talked about last time, we need to add some data. But what I'm going to do um, just very quickly is just talk about the data over here. We've got a table, and we've got a product, and we've got our sales. So these are the, uh, this is the structure we need to think about when we add data to a Deneb visual. Um, we've also got this little line chart here, which you'll, you'll, you'll understand why in a moment. So with Deneb, I'm going to add my product. And that, that appears in the values pane. And now it tells us we can edit our visual. We'll just pop the sales in. And so this and table, the Deneb visual you built now, this is the same product and sales from the table that you've loaded. So this will mirror like, right. the 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 idea here is we would see the same data that that table is representing right now. Oh, yep, so there it is. The hood, yep, perfect. We've got our there tabular is. data. Awesome, love it. We get into Deneb's editor by clicking on the ellipsis and choosing edit. And last video we briefly talked about this screen and what it means, but now we're actually going to go ahead with what we didn't go ahead with last time. <laughs> so I'm going to choose my simple bar chart template. And I have the option to choose a category and a measure. And these are what the template says the, the visual needs. So I've got my product and my sales. If I click on the category, I can choose my product. Mm -hmm. And if I click on the measure, I can choose my sales. Now, I may want to use different things. That's fine. But for now, we're just going to keep it simple. And our Create button down here is now available. So last time, we jumped out, pasted a, a, a different example in. Uh, because we were building up, but now we just want to show you what's out of the box. So if we click Create, um, Deneb has created a bar chart for us. And as before, I'm just going to bump the text up a little bit. Perfect. This is much better to read. Yep. Yeah. Love it. So this is a bit more complex than our last one, but we'll show you why. So if we jump back out of the report, we can now see that we have a bar chart. We can you know, size it as we like. Um, but one of the neat features, and this is what we didn't get with R and Python, um, was that we can actually look at a data point and we have a tooltip. Nice. Uh, which is part of Power BI. We also could say right click and we get our context menu. So we could think about including or excluding. And if we had drill through, um, that would appear as well. So we could actually um, use nice. Deneb visuals to, to, to do actionable BI, which is really, really nice. And the other thing is if we were to click on Amarillo, we can see that it cross filters both that. the table and the line chart. Love and it. I can control click and that will remain highlighted. And I can click to clear and I can do my cross filtering, which is really, really nice. Amazing. This is this is slick. I really liked and and this is this is neat because a lot of this is a lot of code work on the back end to make sure that this works correctly. You you solved this and made it easy for us to use this. It is, yeah. So so in short, what happens is uh, the Vega and Vega Light languages, they have their own functionality that allows interactivity mm. but it it's internal to uh, to its visual so you can have nice visual effects and and combine multiple visuals but it's entirely within a single container sure power bi doesn't think that way um you know it it relies on interactivity between other visuals so what we're trying to do is to simplify some of the things that you know as a custom visual developer they actually take a little bit extra thought we're trying to streamline those experiences for you Love it. So 
the way we do that is a couple of ways. We won't delve too much into it today, but I guess the key differences from last time is this line here. So we've specified a bar mark, which we did last time, which draws this shape on, on the canvas. Let's just zoom that in a bit. There we go, much better. The additional thing we've done is we've added something called tooltip, and we've specified that be true. And what that means is that bar will display a tooltip. So if I hover over the bar, I get the tooltip. And nice. what that's doing is that's just taking all the fields <clears throat> and it's just making a Power BI tooltip sure. um, with, with no real effort from yourself. There's a bit more control, which we'll, we can show you later. But um, to get started, this is quite handy. So obviously, if I take this out and I apply my changes, let's just pop over to apply on. <coughs> Excuse me. If I now hover over the, the bar, mm, no tool it doesn't tip. work. Yeah. Because we, we haven't told it that's where the tooltip goes. Now, what you got to think about it, well, why don't I put a tooltip on everything? The reason is, is that we may not want the tooltip to be displayed on different things like a label or a reference line or an icon, or maybe we do. But the whole point is, is that we want to have control over how a visual looks and feels. And Charticulator kind of does the same thing, where you click on a mark and you've got the option to add a tooltip or not. You know, if I add that back in, then we nice. put it back. So quite simply, um, that's probably the easiest way to get into a tooltip. <clears throat> the next one is a little bit more complicated, and that's the opacity. Now, that's what we call how solid the color is. Mm -hmm. Now, in Power BI, when we click on data points, that transparency or solid appearance is what we use as a visual cue to tell us that something is selected versus unselected. Now, when we develop a visual, Microsoft have done that for us with those core visuals, but we have to then think about how we want our visual to look and feel when that happens. So what I've said here is, um, you know, we won't dwell too much on this today, but just to show you, the key thing is we've got a test for whether a data point is selected, um, and that requires a bit more time to go through. So don't worry about it for now. Uh, but basically, click equals select. So when we click on that, our opacity is 0.3 or 30%. So we can already begin to start playing with the idea of what interactivity might look like. We could change that to, say, 75 when I click on a hmm. on just, a bar, you can just see it's barely it's fading. A, yeah, it's barely fading. But what if instead we did something like stroke, which is the border, and we say made that black? Oh, nice. So now, if it's selected, we can change the. That's actually the opposite. It's like, so it's like the inverse. Say, yeah. So let's say if it's selected. It's actually what, but we can actually put another condition in here to say it's like an if else. Yes. And it should say value because kind of, kind of free for Ah, there. there we go. And yeah. I see it now. There we go. Yeah. So we can start thinking about, you know, if we multi select, we can see hmm. it. We have other states as well. And we won't cover those today because we can actually do some quite smart stuff with if it's explicitly selected versus not. But just this to is give cool. you a flavor. Yeah. You can start thinking about what that looks like. So this is a feature of the Vega language, but what we do is we provide some assistance to make that easier for you where we can, and that's all documented on the website. So if we were to say, look at um, Deneb's website, denebviz.github.io, we have an area on how tooltips work. Nice. And you'll see here that it actually supports report page tooltips as well, um, which is really neat. And we've got some examples of, yeah, there you go, drill through. Mm -hmm. Um, that, that works if it works. And it actually supports the new tooltips as well, the uh, modern tooltips that have just come in. So if you've got those enabled in your reports, uh, they will work. Nice. Very nice. Um, so if we jump up to our, we actually have our simple worked example with a bar chart in it. Um, and published to web is a little bit slow. But just to show you what, this has the modern tooltips installed. Um, you know, I've got a little bar chart here. And just to show you it's different, it's got rounded corners. Um, but I can hover over my, it's not going to do it now, is it? <laughs> there hover it goes. Over my data point and I've got my drill through. Nice. And I can click on my drill through and actually here, um, we have a whole bunch of core visuals 
but I actually have another visual I built down here with Denim, which is a distribution plot. Which is absolutely, can you, can you zoom into that one? Because that one's a really cool yeah, visual. Yeah, let me just see. Hopefully full screen's going to work. Let yeah. me see. Cross your fingers. Yep. Oh yeah, we got full screen. Nice. So down here is this little, um, and this is an example of how we can use the languages to do more work. So this is um, a simple data set, much like this matrix you see here. Mm -hmm. But we've done some calculations internal to the visual to produce what we call density. And, and you may know this is something like a violin plot. Mm -hmm. But we can actually produce layers and this little mouse over effect as well, which shows us a tooltip. Um, and this is one of the more complicated scenarios, but it just shows you where you may be able to wow. go. So this we're is incredible. simple. Yeah, I really like that. But and, and we have a lot of examples where um, you know, we can actually, you know, we're showing you bar charts, they're not exciting. You can build them in Power BI already, but it's the easiest way to think about how you can start designing these visuals. Agreed. Yeah. Um, we want later you can start. We want to give you that visually. core. Yeah. We want to give you the core yeah. of like, here, yeah. here's a bar chart. Understand how this works because we're going to just continually adding knowledge to it. And there's going to be enhancements to the bar chart. And then we'll start talking about internal calculations to the, to the measure, you know, advanced things like adding the stroke and uh, what happens when you select things. Those are fun. Those are advanced features. You, you got to get figure out how do you make a chart first? <laughs> That's right. So, I mean, I have another quick one just to show you where we could go. Yeah, for sure. Um, this is something I just did for storytelling with data. Um, nice. This month, which is a all of these visuals are built with Denim on this page. Um, so this is our, our radial visual. And we can see we have some mouse over effects here for each year. And we have a tooltip, which should hopefully come up. There we go. Wow. Nice. And we've got this little scatter plot over here, which uses the date and the value. And we've actually got some pattern shading in the background. And when we hover over the points, we actually magnify them. Nice. So we can start thinking about all these possibilities. You know, we don't want to we don't want to obliterate our end users with things that are different, but we want to help their experience a bit. Um, and down at the bottom here, we have this little small multiple chart, which almost looks like that density plot. Mm hmm where each month's temperature is is charted and we can see the unfortunate trends that are going on here. But um, this is incredible. It looks so native, we're... though. This is this is the, the yeah. blows my mind. It looks like it was a visual built from Power BI desktop from the Power BI team, because everything here is just so clean. And you're really focusing on like we're, we're moving away from like the visual is becoming a struggle to me to like I can now clearly tell a visual story with my visuals, which is ultimately where we want to get anyways. Yeah. Wow. So look at this. You know, and we can we can do these things. We can we we have to game the system a little bit with the interactivity and how Power BI works, but we can we can give people these experiences with with some thought. Now I won't sugarcoat it. This probably took me an afternoon. <laughs> sure. Um, but we start out simple and, and it's it's about understanding how the grammar puts the visuals together. Yes. Um, so we start with something simple like the bar chart. We understand why the positioning works and what marks are and and we'll, we'll we'll get there awesome and more importantly you'll get there because once you have this knowledge you should be able to start thinking visually and and and, and creating some really interesting stuff and this is the point um yeah. I, you know i can't create all the visuals but there are plenty of people out there that have such amazing talent and can do that and this is what we want to give you so we're again we'll, we'll make the pitch here so this is a great another great example of how you can modify the bar chart uh, this is, our again, our first foray into the series. Stay tuned for more series items coming. Uh, we're going to do a lot more of these uh, we're, and go way deeper into the specification of Deneb, or particularly Vega, and how Deneb use, utilizes it inside the context of Power BI. Daniel, thank you very much for your time. We appreciate it. We'll be back again you, shortly with some more fun for some more fun demos. So we'll see you all soon. Yeah, thanks very much. Take care.